Previously, Apocalypse announced the failure of the quest to capture the Unseen, the Denier. Based on some evidence, Andy is convinced that Unseen should be captured by Unrepair. Subsequently, UMA Galaxy was added as a punishment for failing to complete all missions. Juice stated that all of Apocalypse's punishments had the potential to annihilate humanity. After that, Ark appeared to invade Earth with an alien fleet. Juice successfully defeated the alien invaders with his unjustice abilities. Then he ordered to find the Denier to fill the 11th seat at the round table. Due to a bad feeling, Andy volunteered to approach Unrepair. He offered to leave because he was worried that Unrepair had a potentially fatal attack power. Juice agreed and instructed Taishiana and Fuko to go with Andy. Fuko was confused looking around. It was now September 8th and Fuko was in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. She was at Leblin Beach and inside Leblin Mall in the men's clothing section. She was puzzled by her surroundings. Many famous men wearing suits were in the area. Andy came out after changing the dressing room. Fuko was annoyed with Andy, but she was surprised after seeing him. Andy wore a white suit with a black shirt and a red tie. Fuko was impressed by Andy's long legs. She said that Andy already looked like a celebrity. However, Andy asked if the outfit suited Fuko's taste. He approached Fuko and made her feel uncomfortable. A few hours earlier, Andy and Fuko were on a flying plane. Andy explained about the black market auction house. The place dealt with UMA deniers and artifacts that couldn't be managed by organizations. The place had been destroyed before, but recently it started to resurface. The event was organized by the mafia from around the world. The location always changed and was hard to know, but Jewas managed to find its location. It was on a luxurious ship docked in Rio de Janeiro and would take place at midnight. The place was related to Unrepair. Unrepair was likely there as a buyer or seller. They would infiltrate as customers using tickets made by Nico. Since only selected celebrities could enter, Andy decided to disguise himself, revealing. Andy was puzzled by Fuko, who was trying to cover herself. Fuko was angry and told Andy to stop. However, when Andy first met Fuko, she was wearing a loose top. Fuko denied that, stating that at that time, she planned to die. Then she got angry at Andy, who always chose revealing clothes for her. Andy wished for a major disaster to make things easier. Fuko still didn't want to wear those clothes after hearing Andy's explanation because others could also be dragged into danger. But it turned out that Andy wanted Fuko to come as his partner. He wouldn't let anyone else touch Fuko. Andy chose another outfit and told Fuko to wear the clothes she liked. He picked a red dress and some other clothes. He handed the clothes to Fuko. Fuko took those clothes and she was annoyed because Andy chose revealing clothes again. Fuko remembered when she talked to Juz. She asked Juz the reason for choosing her to go with Andy. The union's priority was to secure the members of the 11th. Therefore, Andy volunteered to capture Unrepair. Juz ordered someone to accompany Andy and that someone was Tatiana. She also instructed Fuko to go with Andy. This confused Fuko and led her to question Juz. Fuko wasn't as strong as Andy and Tashiana. She feared becoming a burden in a fight. Juiz acted based on her sense of justice, wanting to protect the earth and the innocent. Therefore, she ordered Shen and Void to attack Fuko, which could pose a crisis to the earth. But during the fight against Victor, Juiz thought that if Fuko had a power that could kill a god, it could be controlled. Juiz believed that Fuko, in her current state, was not strong enough. So she wanted Fuko to act alongside Andy, be connected, and fall in love with him. Fuko emerged from the changing room, wearing a red dress. Despite Andy's disagreement, Fuko decided to wear the outfit. Andy complimented her, saying the dress looked good, and he gave Fuko a rating of 8 out of 10. He then encouraged Fuko to be confident and place her arms by her side. Fuko was surprised when she saw herself in the mirror. Afterward, Andy decided to choose the same outfit. Fuko felt a bit tight in the chest area, so Andy planned to ask for an adjustment. Fuko and Andy had arrived at the hotel. All their belongings had been transferred inside. Fuko was confused seeing the people in the hotel. The little time left, Andy suggested going for a walk, and Fuko happily agreed. Andy and Fuko strolled along the beach. Fuko gazed at the sea while walking. Andy then asked Fuko about the mishap during Victor's appearance. Fuko became embarrassed and tried to play it off. Later, Fuko ran, and Andy chased her. He told Fuko to stop and unleashed a mishap, a meteor shower similar to what happened to Victor. He was annoyed that Victor got the same mishap. Fuko stopped, removed her gloves, and Andy said she wouldn't be able to touch him as he was wearing full armor. Andy leaped, intending to catch Fuko, but UMA clothes emerged, unbuttoning Andy's shirt. Fuko touched Andy's exposed stomach. Suddenly, a truck hit Andy, sending him into the sea. 
Fuko apologized to UMA clothes and planned to give it a ball of yarn, its favorite treat. Fuko saw Andy in the water and realized her mishap earlier was a combo-type mishap. Fuko approached Andy and apologized, acknowledging that the mishap was more significant than she anticipated. Andy then told Fuko that he knew nothing about Victor. He didn't even know himself. He became certain that Victor was someone with an original personality. Andy couldn't maintain his consciousness without the card on his forehead. He worried that Victor might reappear and attack Fuko and those around her. Fuko reassured Andy, telling him to stay calm as she planned to save him with her mishaps. She vowed always to rescue Andy if such a situation occurred. Fuko told Andy to wake up and get ready for the night. Andy took Fuko's hand and stood up. Fuko forgot that her gloves were off and apologized to Andy. Suddenly, Tatiana fell and collided with Andy. Tatiana looked at Fuko, confused. She had planned to fall near the harbor. Then Tatiana reminded them of Ju's plan. Fuko and Andy would disguise themselves and board the ship at midnight. Meanwhile, Tatiana would infiltrate from another location. The auction would start after the cocktail party. Fuko and Andy would search for unrepair from within, and Tatiana would monitor from the outside. The place would be filled with disgusting sights, so Tatiana told them not to get caught until they found unrepair. She then gave them a tie, knowing Fuko would wear a dress. She had already asked Nico to modify the tie. Fuko accepted the tie and thanked Tatiana. Then Tatiana informed Fuko and Andy about their fake passports. She tricked them into pretending to be a married couple. Fuko and Andy walked in the harbor and then arrived at the ship, which was the auction venue. Andy called Fuko my honey. Fuko responded to Andy as my darling. On September 9th at 030, the ship, the auction venue, had left the port of Rio de Janeiro. The ship sailed in the middle of the ocean. People were standing inside the ship. Andy told Fuko to be careful and advised her to ignore the surroundings and do what she thought was right. Fuko held Andy's hand and they walked. The guards checked their fake tickets and they successfully entered a room. Fuko overheard two people talking about cryptids. Confused, she asked Andy. The people said they wanted to cook the cryptid. Fuko was upset hearing their words, but Andy told her not to listen. Fuko overheard others talking about the main auction featuring a denier. They mentioned that deniers were easier to find now due to the language unification. Language unification had changed all memories and cultures except for deniers. All languages had been transformed into English. Andy saw an empty seat, and they both sat in it. Fuko could talk to Shen thanks to her tie. She realized that deniers who couldn't speak English would stand out because everyone spoke English. She thought it wasn't a good gift for them. Andy tried to deny Fuko's statement, but before he could finish, he saw Fuko not eating. Fuko discussed the choice of bringing the person to be auctioned to the union or letting them be sold. Andy told her not to worry about it. Fuko wanted to know about the person to be auctioned. If they were someone who disliked crowds, Fuko was sure they had led a difficult life. In the past, Fuko didn't understand her ability. She almost tried to die because of it. According to Andy, Deniers only had three life patterns, accepting their ability and living on, falling into despair and dying, or multiplying it and becoming a criminal. But there was also a fourth path, killing the god, the source. Andy joined the union by chance but changed his mind since meeting them. He didn't need acceptance, surrender, or resistance. Meanwhile, Fuko couldn't accept herself and almost gave up. A man and a woman asked for permission to enter the forbidden area. The man wore a half mask. He kept insisting, prompting the guard to point his gun at him. The woman with him was named Latla. She predicted that the bullet from the gun would penetrate the man's head. However, the man jumped and wielded his knife. Suddenly, both guards' necks were injured. They fell without being able to move their hands. Then the man summoned Cain. A giant insect emerged from the sea and threw two people onto the ship. The man teased Latla for not wanting to infiltrate with the other two. The half-masked man was named Rip. Latla handed a garment to Rip. Rip told Latla to dispose of the clothes because he didn't need them. They would wreak havoc on the ship, so he didn't care about the clothes he was wearing. The muscular man asked about something they would take on the ship. Then he laughed because Latla's prediction had been wrong before. Rip greeted the hooded person named Feng. It turned out Feng could only speak in Chinese. Rip thanked Feng in Chinese. Feng ignored Rip's words, and then the four of them entered the ship. Tashiana, outside the ship, observed the four individuals and reported to Andy and Juiz. She explained that they attacked the guards, and the group seemed to be targeting the Deniters who would be auctioned. Tashiana was worried and awaited Juiz's decision. Juiz realized that the group were Denier hunters. Andy thought the group might be the ones who kidnapped Unseen. The group resembled the Union because they were also skilled in forcibly gathering Deniers. However, their goals differed from the Union. 
The Union aimed to kill the god to be free from rules, while they sought revenge on the world. Afterward, they would discard deniers who were deemed useless. Foucault stated that the Union and the group were not the same. She knew that Jews tried to kill her because she attempted to protect others. She understood that denier powers could be painful and sorrowful for someone, but she believed that seeking revenge on the world was wrong. 